Saving America, one entrepreneur at a time. It's the Biz Rap Podcast with your host, Michael Manahan. The show that celebrates small business and entrepreneurs, it's Biz Rap Radio with your host, small businessman, educator, and author, Michael Manahan. And welcome to another edition of Biz Rap Radio. I'm your host, Michael Manahan, and thank you so much for joining me today. As always, we've got a fabulous show lined up for you. If you're new to Biz Rap Radio, we are the show all about small business and entrepreneurs. That's right. We're here to help you, the small business people of America, make more money, grow your businesses, take care of your family, your employees, and be a force in your community. Now, we talk about this a lot on Biz Rap Radio, but... Uh, uh, the, the government, the big corporations, which ha- would have you think otherwise, the driving force in the U.S. economy is small business people. Most small, most people in the United States work for a small business. Uh, as we pulled out of the recession, most new jobs are created by small business. Yeah, you know, there's this. Uh, the government tries to fool you, and the big corporations try and fool you that they employ everybody and they're busy creating jobs. Well, I think it, I think our uh, friend. Uh, Meg Whitman at Hewlett Packard just to announce she's laying off 30,000 people. How's that for creating jobs? Yeah. But you know, when times get tough, what does, what do our old friends in Washington do? Do they help the small businesses? No, they bail out the fat cats on Wall Street and those inefficiently poorly run big corporations. And they let all of the little small businesses die on the vine. Right now we're in a situation where small businesses uh, are fighting to get capital to grow, to fund their business. Business. The banks aren't lending to small businesses anymore unless you've been in business for five years and make a profit every single year and you can put up your house and a whole bunch of other assets as security. The government has put a stranglehold on uh, on capital formation, so uh, we do not have the uh, ability to create funds for small businesses that we had 15, 20, 30 years ago. By the way, in my opinion, one of the reasons why we've been so slow coming out of this last recession Small business people simply cannot get the funding to grow their businesses. And uh, the government rules and regulations have made it impossible. And if you've tried to get a mortgage, if you're a business person and you've tried to get a mortgage recently, um, you know just what I'm talking about. I've got an associate of mine, got a small apartment building, uh, 60 units. It's not huge. He he owes less than 50% of the appraised value, cannot get financing on that apartment building. So that's the situation in America, folks. So we're here fighting for you, trying to make it easier and better for small business people. Now, one of the things I've talked talked a lot about is how if you're a small business person or an entrepreneur, you have to get an education. And of course, I've always clarified that. That doesn't mean you got to go to MBA school. You don't have to graduate from, you know, the Wharton School of Business or something like that. You don't even have to get a bachelor's degree, but you have to gain knowledge. You have to go out there and seek information and learn things and the great thing about biz rap radio is all of our guests have something to share something that you can learn from real lessons that you can apply in your business to make more money and run your business more effectively today i'm a big proponent of education i think most of you listening know that i'm a professor of accounting and finance in the wonderful california state university system but we obviously are not the only alternative for getting an education and i am so glad Glad to have on with me today, um, Shai Rashef. He is the president of University of the People. Shai, welcome to the show. Thank you, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Now, t- tell us, what is University of the People? University of the People is a nonprofit, tuition free, online accredited university built for students who want to pursue their education but cannot afford uh, to do so. Now, when you say when you say accredited, um, who is it accredited by? Because, you know, working in education as I do, as one of my other, other lives, 
uh, there's all these different accrediting boards, and uh, I'll tell you, our, the school I, I, I work for goes through the hoops to meet all of these highfalutin, complicated accrediting uh, rules and regulations, which many, in my opinion, don't mean beans, but that's just my opinion. So who, who, who are you accredited by? So we went through the same process, and we are accredited by the DEAC, which is a national accreditation agency. The DEAC stands for Distance Education Accreditation. Now, you... you the, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. It's, it's the number one accreditation agency for distance learning education, which we are part of, and it's recognized by the... A Department of Education, Council for Higher Education. So basically, it's a fully accredited. Uh, we are a fully accredited American university, like any other. But now you said that the university is free. So how how do you manage to provide? Uh, I don't know instructors and course content and systems and all the rest of this stuff. If it's free, where do you get the money from? Well. First of all, we use everything that is free on the net in order to be able to be tuition free. So we use open source technology. We use educational resources, which is content that professors put on the internet for the rest of the world to use for free. And we heavily lean on volunteers. So our president's council, chaired by John Sexton from NYU, include a vice chancellor of Oxford, the Chancellor of Berkeley, the, under, the American Undersecretary of Education, and many other great uh, prof, uh, presidents of great universities. Our provost is from uh, Columbia University. Our deans are from NYU. All these people are volunteers, including myself. And we have actually 4,000 volunteering professors who jump on board for the very simple reason of believing that the price of higher education in the U.S. became so expensive that many people could not afford it. And education is the only path for a bright future. So we should enable people to be able to study. And if education is too expensive and we are showing the way to make it much less expensive so people want to support it. Now, I think that I should uh, clarify that we are tuition-free yet we are not free. We expect our students, after taking courses, to pay $100 per exam. So they take the courses for free, we expect them to pay $100 per end of course exam, which ends up to be $4,000 for entire BA degree. So the entire BA would cost them $4,000 if they have the money. If they don't have the money, we offer a variety of scholarships because it is our mission that nobody would be left behind for financial reasons. Now, this 100, and you ask me how we can manage it, well, this um, 100 or from scholarship uh, will make us sustainable next year when we have 4,000 paying students. So with 4,000 paying students paying $100 per exam, the university is financially sustainable. Until that point, we are leaning and we are uh, getting donations. So we get grants from the Gates Foundation, the Foundation, and many other corporates and individuals who basically support us and uh, help us get to the point where we will be financially sustainable from exam fees. Now, who, how many students do you have at this present time? Right now, we have over 2,000 students. We uh, we got our accreditation a year ago. Mm -hmm. Until that point, we kept the number small. We had about 500 students. Now we are over four times bigger than we were a year ago. We have over 2,000 students. The plan is to be 4,000 students next year to double the numbers next year and actually to continue doubling every year from then on. But by doubling the number Next year, we will be financially sustainable. Wow, that's that's amazing. I think that's just uh, fabulous. Uh, what sort of support have you got from our friends in Washington? You know, the ones who are always squawking that the price of education is too high. we got to reduce the cost of student loans and all that sort of stuff. What sort of support have you got from those boys? Well, <laughs> we did not get any financial support, if that's what you mean, from, uh, from Washington or from anyone else. And... To be honest with you, we don't want to get government support. I think that uh, 
we want to show that education can be way less expensive uh, than what it is right now and we don't need the government money in order to prove this point. We well, want to uh, show universities that they can open their doors wide be- without, because, you know, right now universities come and say, we can do that. We don't have the resources, we don't have the capacity, and what we're saying, if we can do it, you can do it as well, because whatever we have is taken from other universities, you know, the professors, our professors teach elsewhere. And we want also to show this model for developing countries where kids don't get into, the, where there aren't enough schools for the kids. So we have a very important model to show the world, and we don't want to compromise it by government money. Okay. Well, let's get back to that in a minute, because we need to break for commercials. This is your host, Michael Manahan, Biz Rap Radio. I am speaking with Shai Rashef. He is the president of University of the People, a university that uh, is not, not completely free, but it's almost free, and, and he is out there revolutionizing education in America. We'll be back right after these messages. And welcome back to Biz Rap Radio. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you uh, just joined the uh, show, we are speaking with Shai Rashef. He is the president of University of the People, and Shai is out there trying to revolutionize the way we deliver education. He has a complete online university, accredited, by the way, that um, that uh, basically uh, the the tuition is, is, is basically zero, but you do have to pay when you take an exam. But you get a complete bachelor's degree at University of the People for about $4,000, which is almost uh, unbelievable. Um, Shai, thanks again for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, well, you know, before we went to... Uh, by the way, let me give the contact information. If somebody is interested in University of the People, you can go to www uopeople.edu that's uopeople.edu what I was referring to previously when I was talking about government support I wasn't so much talking about money but you would think the way the politicians are in Wall Street and always squawking about these student loans that they would be standing up there you know that Obama would be on the TV saying everybody forget about regular schools you need to get your education at University of the People so you don't have to take out one of those crazy student loans but that's not happening obviously well, it might <laughs> one day, but it's not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I look at uh, at um, Obama talking about uh, tuition free and the sixty million billion dollar that he thinks that uh, that he actually announced that it will cost, and I'm saying, well, it can cost way less than that because that's what we're doing. I think that uh, you know, I don't think that that every university should be tuition free. I think that some universities. Um, some great research universities will can charge more and people will pay for it. But there must be an alternative for those who cannot afford it. And that's what, we, what we're showing. And there must be a tuition-free alternative for those who cannot uh, afford paying for it. It can be right now and for everyone. And I'm even, even arguing why should we limit it like Obama is talking about for two years? Why not? making it four years. Uh-huh. We're showing that it works, and it does work. I mean, we have graduate lights. It's not, and we are accredited, so there is a system that is out there. Um, the politicians are still not talking about us, but, you know, one day they will, I guess. Well, I, I love the idea, and I've always, as a, as a teacher, I have always thought we could do more to... Uh, to not only reduce the cost of education, but, you know, it seems to me, I, I'm, a, I'm a big historical fan, I do a lot of reading, and, you know, hundreds of years ago, uh, th- there was not the formal schooling we have today, but people learned from the older people in the community, whether it was, uh, you know, whatever it might be, if there was somebody in the community who was... Uh, uh, 
a good at leather working, then, you know, as he got on in age, he or she, he would teach the younger people and they would work with the older people. I think one of the shames of our of our culture is we take these people who retire at 65, they've got 40 years of real world experience doing things, running corporations, you know, doing accounting, engineering, whatever they've done, and then we like stick them on the golf course. Uh, and and yet many of them would would love to be involved in education. And I once went to uh, now this was not at university level. This was at the high school level. But uh, when my daughters were in high school, I went to the local high school and I sat down with uh, one of their committees and I said, "Look at why don't we bring some of the." Um, you know, retired folks into the classroom to help with the students. Ah, oh, you should have heard the squawking I got. Well, well first of all, <laughs> insurance problems. Well, what happens if they fall and they sue the school? And then the next thing was, well, no, the union, the, the teachers' union won't let us do that. And and then the the third thing was, well, they don't know anything about education. They haven't had to, they don't have a degree in education, <laughs> so they can't teach anybody. You know, uh, yet yet I I just think we have so much knowledge and wisdom that we just put out to pasture, and I think that's a real shame. I well, you know, I can't agree more with you. I mean, our provost is is uh, retired, and he's actually spending his days with us. And I, I mentioned earlier that we have four thousand volunteering professors. Many many of them are volunteering with us. I mean, and when you think about it, not only as you mentioned that they have great experience, they can teach, they can learn, they can they can do great for our students, but think about someone in his retirement days waking up in the morning, taking a glass, the glass of good, you know, the cup of coffee to the kitchen, opening his laptop, and starting to communicate and teaching twenty students from twenty countries. That's wow. an amazing experience for the professor and for the retired. A great day to spend your, your days and amazing, amazing help for the students. So it's a win-win. Absolutely. And yeah, I think that, that we shouldn't be the only one who's doing it. I agree. Well, I know on our campus, one of the things we're doing at uh, Cal State uh, University, Dominguez Hills, is not in all areas, but certainly in the business area, uh, we are bringing on more and more people uh, who are not professional educators into the classroom. I do a, I do a, a course on entrepreneurial finance, and I usually bring in at least five to six guest speakers during the uh, semester. And these are people who... Um, you know, entrepreneurs, people in the world of finance, and and they're not all super successful. And you know, I think a lot of the times we we say, oh, we we need we need Bill Gates in the classroom. Well, you know, there, there's only a few Bill Gateses, but there's a lot of people with real world experience. And I think sometimes talking to somebody who's struggled and hasn't been a super success is a real learning experience because it it you don't just learn by being super successful. Sometimes you know, the school of hard knocks is a great education. I I agree with that as well. By the way, our pedagogy is peer to peer learning. So we have twenty to thirty students. When when our when the students come to us and they take a class, and we put them together with twenty to thirty students in a class with an instructor. But the, the the pedagogy is discussion between the students about the topic of the week, and you know, learning from each other, learning from the experience of each other, the success and the failure of each other. That's a to study. I can't agree more with you. Yeah. Well, I always, I always say when I I took my MBA school that uh, uh, I I I learned next to nothing from the professors, but my entire MBA education was my my I think there was twenty of us, eighteen of us in the MBA class was the the fellow MBA students. That was the learning experience. I didn't learn anything from the professors, but and I still, by the way, am in touch with many of those uh, with my MBA class. That was nineteen ninety two. Uh, we do an annual ski trip every year. We see each other on the slopes, and it's absolutely fabulous. And we've done business back and forth together. So that's a great uh, kind of strategy. Yeah, helping helping students learn from each other. Um, I, I think that's a wonderful uh, experience. Now, it, look, at if somebody's listening here, uh, we already gave out the website. Uh, we'll do it once again. It's www.uopeople.edu. That's for University of the People. 
if somebody is interested in volunteering to help your organization, uh, should they go to the same website? Same website, and there is a place for admission and a place for volunteering. And, you know, in order to be accepted to university, our entry requirements um, are high school diploma and proficiency in English. So basically our uh, mission is to open the door to any qualified student. Um, obviously, we need the high school diploma and, and the documents, but uh, besides that, anyone can 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 uh, be can apply and be accepted and study with us. And uh, the same goes to the volunteer. We accept as many volunteers as uh, there are out there. Obviously, we can't. We have so many of them. We can't. Pay, but we keep their names, and as soon as the opportunity pop up, we contact them and. Uh, Ask them for those services. And wow, that's it's great. Working great. And 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 again, you, how many volunteers did you say you have involved in the organization? Well, we have four thousand volunteers who um, actually came and and offer the help. We're using right now about three to four hundred of them. We can't use all of them, but uh, the more you know, we we are doubling our number every year. So therefore, we double the number of volunteers and. We have some thoughts about how to connect the volunteers to the students directly, which we haven't done right now. And when we are successful in doing that, we will know, we will use many more of them by being mentors, being a, a advisors, etc. to our students. Well, that is just great. Look, we're coming up towards the end of the segment again, uh, but this is really interesting. I'm a huge supporter of this concept. It's University of the People. I'm speaking with the president, Shai Rishef, and maybe after the break we can talk a little bit more about how you developed this and got it up and running because you're really an entrepreneur. I mean, even though this is not a, uh, a profit-making type business, it, it still is, it takes an entrepreneurial spirit to, to get something like this going. So I want to talk a little bit about your background and experience. Experience. You're listening to BizRap Radio. I'm your host, Michael Manahan. We again are talking with Shai Rashef, University of the People. Check it out at www.uopeople.edu. Uh, get an education, become a volunteer, get involved, and we'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to BizRap Radio. It's your host, Michael Manahan. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. And if you just joined us, if you just tuned in, we are speaking with Shai Rashef. He is president of University of the People. And University of the People is an online accredited university which offers uh, tuition-free education. You, you pay a small fee for taking the test, but certainly a, a much more economical option than some of our high-cost universities uh, that we operate here in the U.S. And, and I think possibly a great uh, opportunity for us to unburden a lot of these students uh, from the the tremendous uh, student loans they have to take out to get through school, if uh, instead this is a viable alternative, uh, makes a lot more sense. And and uh, Shai, you were saying that somebody could actually get their entire bachelor's degree for the total cost of about four thousand dollars. Right, that's true. And by the way, we have a lot of students these days who drop out of colleges because they can't afford the loans, and they come come to us to study with us because they just, you know, some people realize that the better they accumulate, they will never be able to pay back. So they come to us. It's a new phenomena, a growing phenomena with us. Now, what what kind of a reception have you gotten from the business community? Because, uh, you know, I know that uh, not, not in all circles, but in certainly some circles, there's uh, uh, you know, there's there's degrees and there's degrees. Uh, I, I know business people who, well, you know, I, I, somebody has to be from this standard of university or we're not interested in hiring them. Have you got any feedback from the, the business community? Are they enthused about this idea or do they think, ah, I'm not quite so sure? Well, we're a little bit young, too young to talk about it in, in definite you know, statements and numbers. We have about 100 graduates right now. All of them are being occupied. Saying that, 
the overwhelming majority of our students work while they're studying. So talking about them working right now uh, is not necessarily uh, indicate anything because they work while studying. But, and we need a few more years to see how well they progress with their jobs, whether they find a new jobs. But so far, we get very positive reaction, both talking to our students, how their employers look their degree, and from the, the business community. So it sounds like the business community is, uh, is behind this, and I think you'll probably see a lot more of that as you grow and get more students out there. You'll be able to actually uh, see what kind of track record they have in terms of uh, whether they're able to get jobs and, and whether there's any bias out there in the, uh, in the business community. Uh, what, about, what about the uh, traditional universities and, and I'm thinking in particular things like the the faculty unions and what have you have they uh, have uh, have you you had any response from them so far we have a very positive reaction from uh, the um, academia so we are partners with Yale Law School for research with NYU where our students can continue after studying a year with us uh, in NYU Abu Dhabi with a, with a generous scholarship, uh, we haven't seen any any issue with any um, with any union or with any organization for the very simple that you know there is such a huge demand and there are so many people that need our services. We are not coming on the expense of anyone else. There is room for us. There is room for others and. You know, and and if you look at the globe in general, there are 100, UNESCO stated that there are 100 million students who will be soon deprived from higher education. Wow. And, you know, in our classroom, there is room for everyone. So people can study online and you can accommodate everyone. So I don't think that anyone should either feel threatened by us or being against it because it's a a good thing for everyone. Okay, so let, well, let me ask you, what, what is the focus of the university in terms of your curriculum? Are you a business school? Are you a liberal arts? Um, I mean, what, 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 are the, what kind of courses can somebody take at your university? Yes. Uh, we, we only offer business administration and computer science. Ah. These are the two degrees that uh, are likeliest. You know, our students come to us in order to have a better future. That's why people come to us. And for that very reason, we chose the two degrees that are likeliest to help our students to find a job, to find a better job. So we have right now associate and bachelor degree in uh, computer um, in computer science and business administration. We're now working on uh, health science and MBA. Um, so, but still, we chose those degrees that we believe that are most likely help our students. By, by the way, when they study with us, like any other university, uh, they also have a part of those studies is general. So it's not only the business administration or computer science courses, but arts and science as well. Well, that's great because, you know, a lot of our listeners uh, here at BizRap Radio are small business people and entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, so uh, additional education in the field of, uh, of business administration and in the field of computers would be extremely beneficial. So, again, if you're a small business person, if you're an entrepreneur out, entrepreneur out there, if you think maybe you don't have enough education, if you think there's things you need to uh, learn, check out um, www.uopeople.edu and uh, go back to school. Get an education. Now, um Shai, how did you? What was the inspiration for this? I mean, people just don't sit around. What you know, sit around having a cocktail on a Friday evening and say, "Hey, I got an idea. I'm going to start a university." <laughs> well, <laughs> it wasn't exactly like this. Well, I spent 20 years of my life in for-profit education, and I was in charge of educational programs from kindergarten, hundreds of thousands of, of students from kindergarten to a college level. Among other things, I was in other things. I was in charge of uh, starting the first online university, actually for-profit university in Europe. It was the first online university in Europe, and that's where I realized how powerful online can be, because we had students from all over the world keeping their job, 
staying with their families and still getting this great European education. But at the same time, I also realized that for most people, this was nothing but a wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. It was simply too expensive. I ended up selling uh, the university, as I mentioned, it was for profit and the rest of my business. And I went into semi-retirement just to realize that it was not for me. You know, I said, I need to continue. But I also felt that um, I'm fortunate. I have enough. It's my turn to give back. And for me to give back must have been in a way that will have an impact on, it, on, on the world because that's me. And t- looking at my history and my knowledge, obviously, I felt that it must be in education because when you think about it, when you educate a person, you can change a life. But when you educate many, you can change the world. Mm -hmm. So I looked around and I realized that everything that made higher education so expensive is available and for free. Open source technology, open educational resources, and actually the new phenomena of social networking where people share, teach, and learn from each other for free. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a second. All I have to to do is to put it together. So I did, and I created universe for the people. So, you know, it was a a cocktail idea with some experience that I had from my uh, past professional uh, life. Well, that that is an absolutely fabulous story, and I just love it. And again, uh, let me give out that website for our listeners. It's www.uopeople.edu. That obviously stands for University of the People. You can go there, get an education, uh, not exactly for free, but extremely low cost on an online model, accredited university. I got just about one minute left here, Shai. Um, any parting thoughts? Uh, what, what's next? What's the future going to hold for University of the People? Well, I think that um, the need, first of all, uh, I think that we're building a model. And the need for our services is huge. There are out there, your listeners and millions other that can benefit from education because nothing can, like education can improve someone's life, giving them better future and better life. And I think that uh, it should be done. And we look ourselves as pioneers there. And we are going to grow to serve these people and grow and grow and grow until one day we'll wake up and realize that someone else came and all, all the people and do what we do and all the people that need these services are being served. And at that point, probably we'll go to back to sleep and wake up the next day with a new idea. But until then, <laughs> we'll just do what we do and continue to grow. Well, it's 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 really exciting. It's interesting. You're definitely an entrepreneur. You're you're out there changing the world, changing the way we educate people. I think it's fabulous. I'm a true believer in education. Uh, you're doing a wonderful service for the country and for the world. We appreciate it very much. It is Mike Manahan, Biz Rap Radio, on with uh, Shai Rashef, University of the People. Check it out. Give those uh, that uh, URL once again, www.uopeople.edu. And Shai, thanks for being on the show. It was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Not a problem. Happy to have you. It's Biz Rap Radio, your host, Michael Manahan. I'll be right, uh, back right after these messages. And welcome back to Biz Rap Radio. It's your host, Michael Manahan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And wow, what a great conversation we've just had with Shai Rashef. And he is the founder and president of University of the People. You know, this is a really exciting idea. He has an online accredited university that basically is free. The tuition is free. You have to pay for every test that you take. So in order to pass the courses, you have to pay, but it's only $100. You can get a bachelor's degree for $4,000, I think um, Shai was saying. And and here it is. Again, it's, it's an entrepreneur that is creating new ways of doing things, driving down the cost of education, which we know is outrageously high. 
And while all of the politicians in Washington and uh, at the state level are constantly talking about the cost of education and how, how much it is, and uh, they're wringing their hands, oh, we need to do something, we need to figure out a way where students can pay less interest on their uh, extremely high student loans, uh, why not instead do what Shy is doing and figure out a way to deliver that education to the people who need it for less money? Wow! I mean, let's cut costs rather than forcing students to take out huge loans that will take them years to pay off so they can pay for the bloated university budgets uh, that we have in in the United States. I mean, it just makes all the sense in the world, yet the hand-wringing politicians manage to accomplish next to nothing, and it takes a good old entrepreneur, Shai Rashef, to come up with an idea. Uh, University of the people, get an education, get your bachelor's degree. It's going to cost you $4,000. You can do it all online, and it is a quality-accredited education. Makes so much sense to me, but... Why the lights never seem to go on with the folks in Washington, I will never, never know. I, I want to change the subject, and with the remaining time we've got today, I want to talk a little bit about credit cards. I know a lot of you out there probably use credit cards for your business, and it's become very common to use credit cards to uh, to purchase things for your business. Uh, it used to be years ago before the advent of credit cards, and when credit cards were not so popular, if you wanted to buy from a particular supplier, uh, you would apply for an account. You'd fill out a credit application. They would run a D&B, which uh, many of you may not be familiar with, down in Bradstreet, a uh, rather suspicious organization that uh, purported to have information on businesses and could tell whether they were uh, reasonable credit risks. And then after making a credit decision with the supplier, you would get an account and you could then purchase on account from the supplier and uh, you would get an invoice in the mail, which you would pay in due course. But a lot of that has has stopped as it's become more and more popular for companies to use credit cards. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with using credit cards for your business supplies. But there are some rules, or I wouldn't call them rules, but guidelines that can make your life a little easier. And I want to go over a few of those. First and foremost, try and get a business credit card. Uh, and that means a credit card that does not show up on your own personal uh, credit report. And uh, some businesses, are not, or you have credit cards, are using credit cards that are really the personal credit cards of the owner of the business. So what happens, the owner of the business goes to apply for a loan or get a mortgage, and there's this credit card that has a perhaps a high balance, and now you've got to do a whole bunch of explaining to the mortgage company or the lender why your personal credit card is so high. It can also affect your personal credit score. So you want to get a true business credit card. You may guarantee the payments under the credit card, but you want to clarify with the credit card company that, in fact, the, in, uh, the credit card information is not reported under your personal social security number. So that's number one. Number two, uh, nowadays with a lot of reoccurring charges, you can have a situation where you've got 10, 15, 20. So I've seen some companies with 30, 40 reoccurring charges coming through to their company credit card every month. Everything from uh, internet suppliers, uh, all, all manner of different services, subscriptions. Uh, and it really is convenient. It's real convenient until you have to cancel the credit card because of the problem or the issue of fraud. So a recommendation is if you have a lot of reoccurring charges on your company credit card, have one credit card that is dedicated for those reoccurring charges. Don't be using that same credit card when you take a client to lunch or when you're traveling or when you're buying gas because it, 
it is far more likely your credit card is going to be compromised when you're out there making purchases such as buying gas or, or going to restaurants. Uh, so have a one card that is really for those reoccurring charges that occur in your business each month. Then have a second card that is used for uh, the other expenditures that you make, such as travel, such as buying gas, such as taking clients out to lunch, and so on. And and that way there's less likelihood that the main card that has the reoccurring charges on it will get compromised. Now, one additional idea, if you travel a lot, uh, you know, a lot of cards get stolen or at least the information gets stolen when you're traveling, it's a great way to compromise a card. One thing you can do is if you're traveling and you think that that particular uh, trip is going to cost you $2,000, get one of these prepaid cards. You can prepay the card in advance, and then this way, uh, if for some reason the card got compromised, the people who stole the card information could not charge any more than the amount to which you funded the prepaid card. So you've kind of protected your downside. Uh, so those are just some ideas that you should be aware of when using credit cards in your business. Don't forget, if you're going to use credit cards in your business, make sure you're using a credit card where you can build up some nice points. So you can use those points either for business expenses or for taking uh, a nice vacation, uh, which is always a great idea. So there you have it. Just some tips for using credit cards. Now, um, the the other uh, kind of thing that I, that bothers me about credit cards, and I travel a lot internationally, and I don't know why this is, but when I travel to other countries, I think of Canada, one in particular, also in Mexico, you give your you don't give your credit card to the server who then takes it into the back room where you can't see what's happening. They bring a little device to the table and they process it right there at your table. Now, why we don't have more of that? Uh, here in the U.S., I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. But uh, the other thing is, is try not to let that credit card, you know, out of sight, if at all possible. Keep the credit card where you can keep your hands on it. So there's just some ideas to uh, protect yourself against a credit card fraud. Because boy, when that credit card gets canceled, now that we use them so much for business, it can be a real hassle. Hey, look, at that's it for BizRap Radio. You know, here at BizRap Radio, we believe we can fix the United States of America through a fundamental concept that individuals pursuing their own economic interests in free markets will create more prosperity for more people than can ever be achieved through government regulations and a planned economy. Thanks again to my guest today, uh, Shai Rashef, University of the People. Check it out. And of course, visit bizrapradio.com. That's bizrapradio.com. Listen to all of our archive shows. Uh, connect with me. Send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. I am your host, Michael Manahan. This is BizRap Radio, and we'll be back again next week with another edition of BizRap Radio.